Hey, good morning. Yes, it is. It is Thursday, August 8th. So I thought this morning we'd kind of do a little bit of a couple topics anyways. And one is, you know, my philosophy of you only get what you give, right? And the biggest question is, are you a giver or are you a taker? <laughs> Hang tight. We're going to cover that. And I want to cover some of the questions quick because I want more. I, I want more information on this spark tester. If I could, Jack Daniels. All right, so hang tight. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Eric, and yes, this is the weekday, Monday through Friday. Today is Thursday, August 8th. So let's address Jack Daniels first. You know, there are things out there that can cause harm. And if it could cause or has caused, then it's up to the company to either recall it or... You know, like you said, recalling it, or at least stop producing it. And as big a company as Harbor Freight is, if there was a series of those spark testers breaking down and people getting hurt, they're pretty quick about getting rid of stuff that, you know, could cause them a lawsuit, to be honest with you. Now, I've never had any problem with those style of spark testers other than sometimes the bulb in them goes out and you don't get any read. But I always found that the best read when it came to a spark tester is hitting the ignition switch before Claude has got the, just before he gets the boot on. And if, he, if it goes numb from his elbow to his jaw, I know that's three-quarter spark or a little bit better. <laughs> Any of you guys, I know, me included, you know, have been around spark testers or, or checking the spark and got nailed, you know, and it's not a joyful thing. They say it can stop the heart if you... I've seen guys hold it on to it and not bother them a bit or at least they wouldn't put it on. Me, holy moly. But that brings me to a quick story on my electric fence and how I learned a valuable lesson. See, on electric fence, you have a positive going out and you have a ground, right? And the positive is feeding the whole fence. So I always assumed that the fence was, the positive was hot. And the ground is a negative, right? You would think so. On a car, you have a positive post, a negative post. Well, with a fencer, the way it works is the fence isn't really hot all the time. It's only when something that is grounded touches that does it light up like a balloon. So... I had talked with my friend because my cows were getting out on a regular basis. And he said, you need to add more grounds there. And grounds are basically, you know, your ground rods that are six, seven foot long, copper. And you drive them deep into the earth. And then the tractor supply fencer said to have two in series. And just said, you need three or more. So I, I bought two more, so there'd be four. So I put in the two ground rods, and I went to connect them. And I thought, well, shoot, I don't need to turn the fencer off because the positive is hot. I'm over here working on the ground. So I got the wires all hooked to the two new ones, and I was getting ready to hook the two new ones to the two old ones when it just about knocked me on my keister 
You want to talk about hot. <laughs> but that's my valuable lesson that I give to you if you ever decide to have cows. Don't touch the ground. Because I remember growing up early on that some of the things that we learned on the farm. You know, I wasn't a farm kid, per se. But I was always on in somebody's farm, you know. Friends had farms and this and that. And that is, you could take and get one or two people to grab a hold of the fence. But if you had a series of people, it was only the last person that got jolted. Yeah. And we used to talk newbies. You know, those are the new kids that never been around on a farm. Like I was at one point in time. To piss on the fence. That's a winner. <laughs> All right. So this morning is going to be kind of a. It, it covers the spectrum of both. Personal growth. Well rounded. And also business sense. And that is. Are you a giver or are you a taker? In life. In general. And. Is there a test for it? No. Nope. But you're pretty easy to spot. If you're around someone and you need what they have and you keep taking, taking, taking until that person has nothing else to offer and then you move on. A giver is never looking for anything from anybody. And they're always trying to help people that want to help themselves. Some givers don't know enough to where they get so depleted that, you know, they don't know what to do. And we see that a lot when it comes to business. A lot of successful business people are takers. But there's many more that are givers. You know, let's just kind of set corporate aside. Because corporate, they they run a business on what they think is the best for the business, right? Not their employees, not their consumers, what's best for the business. And that's where they focus, all right? Now, with me, how I focus is... You know, I'm willing to do just about anything for anybody, right? To a certain extent. And I learned years ago how to spot a taker. And my wife and I used to hang around a numerous takers. And anytime they needed stuff, we would help them out. And, you know, like when we were working on their new house... We supply all the food, like the hot dogs, hamburgers, all that stuff, to kind of help them out because they were putting their money towards building materials, right? Right? All right, so we got the house pretty well three quarters done. And he he was a finished carpenter, so he could work on the inside. The following year, we started our new house. They never showed. They never came, never had barbecues for anybody that worked. So it kind of leaves that bad taste in your mouth, you could say. And in the same sense, I'm trying to be, because it's a fine line. And the reason I bring it up is because we were talking, one of our neighbors, he's a cantankerous old man, all right? He's done well in the business, but he used to get out and about, and he was always loaning to visit, right? And that's what he would do. He'd get in his truck and go all over the place. Well, he had a, a minor stroke here. A while back, and that kind of limited what he could do for driving, right? But he was the type of person, he is the type of person that 
If he's talking to you, he's talking bad about everybody else. And you know he's talking bad about you when he goes somewhere else, right? But he wanted to know if there was any chance we could come down and put a belt on for him, onto his lawnmower. He had the belt. And he said that his son was just so busy that he hasn't got time to do it. Well, first of all, if I were his son, I'd make time. Unless I don't want him on the lawnmower. Same deal with the truck. He called last week and wanted to know if we'd come down and jumpstart the truck. Or take the battery and charge it. I'm thinking that his son is trying to keep limit him of what he can do. Just to keep him on the porch relaxed and then just enjoying the weather. But I'm looking over at Claude while this... Neighbor is on the phone, and Claude is shaking his head and mouthing, no damn way. No. Not. And it's it's distracting when you're talking on the phone, and yeah, somebody over there memeing, you know. <laughs> so I just told him, I said, look, in the next day, a day or two, I'll get down, and I'll throw it down for you. So I get off the phone, and Claude is like, no freaking way. Because he wouldn't do squat for you if you needed help. But he expects everybody else to drop everything that they're doing. To come running to do what he needs done. And he won't pay you. He screwed the shop more than once. He'll show up and say, oh, I left all my money at home. I'll catch you the next time. And he said, you let him get away with it. He's got money. You know, that's not a question. He's got money because he isn't willing to spend it or pay you to come do it. He wants you to come down and do it for free. So I said, what's wrong with doing it for free? He just had a stroke here just a little while ago. He's had medical conditions that he's been in and out of the hospital. Terrible diabetes. I says, I don't care. He said, I don't mind helping people out, but he said that he just rubs me the wrong way. And I know he won't appreciate you or I going and putting that belt on for him. And the minute you leave, you're going to be the biggest asshole ever. I have a variation of numerous customers, all right? I have the Ones that turn a lot of people off, but I can get, I can come back at them and get them just to stop and their mouth drop and then they just start laughing because nobody's ever come up against them. Nobody's ever just said, knock it off, you know, asshole. And that's the, the relationship I've had with him over the years is I will stop and visit with him for a while when he pulls in. And it is taking time away from my work, yes, but he is also a neighbor, and he gets bored at home, and he goes and visits. He loves to visit. And he talks about everything from politics to farming to the town politics to people he hates. But in life, you're going to encounter one or the other or both. And you have to decide, you know, who are you? Are you a giver or are you a taker? And it's pretty easy. If you find that you're relying on everybody else for everything, you're a taker. If you're hanging with people because there's some benefit you get, you're a taker. If you only think of yourself... In your needs, you're a taker. We got to have takers in this world. If we were all givers, it'd be a boring world, right? And Lord, it developed different personalities, right? A taker is somebody that's in business that does not donate anything to anybody, is not willing to do pro bono. They don't believe in giving something to somebody that 
that everybody should pay. It's just a waste of their time. They should get paid for it. You know, helping out the churches, food pantries. They don't do that. They don't believe in it. They don't believe in helping their community. They believe in just helping themselves. And some can fool the majority of the people sometimes, but you can't fool them all the time, right? And I notice who they are. And I just, I don't do business with them. And it's not because they're terrible people. It's because I don't like their business model per se. And I know that if I get entangled with them, <clears throat> I'll be just one more person on the list to what can they get from me, right? Givers are easier to spot. Givers are the ones that, you know, try to do everything for everybody. And you got to be careful too because some givers, you know the people that sit there and they, and they do everything for somebody, right? And then if they don't get any kind of praise back, they hate that person. See, that's the extreme of a giver. Also a borderline personality, but extreme, all right? And an extreme of a taker is getting someone to sign over their inheritance the day before someone passes away to them and take everybody else out of their will. <laughs> We've had that in this family. Every family has one of each or a couple of each. What do you? What do you value? What do you? How do you define a giver and a taker? You know, there's got to be takers in this world. There's got to be givers. But you have to define who you are and then you need to set up like an equation. Like this is only going to take place if X, Y, and Z get met. So I'm going to start wrapping this up. But I mean, there's givers, takers, and there's ones that are in the middle that can do both. And those are the optimal people. I mean, at times, you'll help people and you don't get anything back. Does that mean they're a taker? No, it means just means maybe they're not they don't have the ability at that time and other times i've seen where a lapse of communication of i thought you were going to help us build our house well we never said that uh, okay so maybe communication breakdowns but in the end you can't be with someone that is sucking you dry, whether it's in a relationship, you know, your partner, you know, needy all the time, just you're drawing all your energy away. Family member, you know, sometimes you just have to get clear of them. And a lot of times I've seen with people that are hooked on drugs, they become takers because they need that next fix. And they don't care who they hurt or take advantage of to get that money or whatever to get their next fix. So on that note, you guys have a great Thursday. And we'll, hear, we'll see you here bright and early tomorrow morning. And I want, what do you guys just take on that spark plug tester too? You know, that Jack Daniels brought up that he showed the store manager the issues. Have you seen it before? All right.